I always try to find some kind of visual that represents the section that we're going through. When I was thinking about installing CUCM, I thought, a cup of coffee is about all you need. The process is really simple. It's just waiting. Uh, so I will show you the process, but I want to talk a little around that first. So first question, where do I get the software? So you're probably talking about a lab environment, because if you buy Call Manager, obviously Cisco gives it to you. So if you're just building a lab to study, uh, what I did when I first uh, got into this world, I went to eBay. And I googled CUCM, and and uh, they somebody some guy was selling his set of DVDs for it for seventy bucks or something like that. I just bought those. But nowadays it looks like people are are giving like an ISO download that you can get, or or a USB key with some pre-created VMware images. Like there's you know CUCM and Cisco Unity connection. I mean just just surf around. You can you can grab it off of eBay. Also again for a lab environment, you can use some very uh, tactful Google search terms to find uh, usually an ISO image that you can download of Call Manager and, and get it going just in a lab environment because Cisco gives you enough licenses to go with a few phones so you can test and you can really kick the tires and learn this product. Uh, so the hardware requirements. Uh, hardware requirements, it doesn't really con uh, consume much. However, uh, it it uh, will eat up a little bit of hard drive space, at least for the provisioning. So here's, here's what I mean. Now I'm using uh, VMware Workstation as the uh, emulation uh, center of, of choice, uh, which I paid for. I bought and paid for this product. Uh, you can get VMware Server for free. You can get VMware ESX for free. Uh, Call Manager recognizes the hardware and installs on all of them. So let me show you what, what it looks like to create an image. You can see I already have a couple of these going, CUCM, CUCM test, just some ones I've been playing with here, so let's get this out of here and let's just create a new virtual machine. I'm going to say typical, that's fine, uh, and uh, installer disk file, I've got the ISO sitting right here uh, on my system. So let's say that's the ISO that I want, it says I can't detect the operating system, that's fine. Linux Enterprise 3 is the one that I've had the best luck with, but you can use essentially any one of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. To, it, essentially, you need to simulate as if this is a Linux-based machine, because it is. It, uh, Cisco has built it on top of it. So we can name it CUCM 8.6 or whatever uh, flavor you're using. Figure out where you're going to store the virtual machine. That's fine. So here's the big thing. You want to make sure that the, the hard disk has 80 gigabytes provision for it. It's not going to be... It's not actually going to use that. I know some of you are on the solid-state hard drive kick, and you're, you've got like a 40 gig hard drive, but it's really fast. Uh, but but uh, you want 80 gigs provisioned. I would say the actual install probably takes about 10 gigabytes when it's all said and done, between 10 and 15 gigs. Um, so VMware Workstation is very good as long as you you know, tell it 80, it'll it'll make the operating system believe it has that, and it won't actually eat up that much from your your drive. It actually only uses what is really there. Uh, so I'm going to store the, the disk as a single file, and then I'm going to customize the hardware. Uh, you need to have at least a gigabyte of memory free. I would say if you got it, throw it at it, throw two gigabytes at it. Um, one processor is fine. I always, you know, I've got a, an i7. Uh, processor, so I usually throw a couple more just for fun. Uh, n not not so much that I need the the killer performance because really it it runs just fine. But I will say if you run it on one gig of memory, you're gonna feel it. I mean things will things will be going a little slow. Of course, bridge it to whatever network you would like to run this from. Uh, once you you know you go with NAT, it's gonna be hidden behind your computer. Uh, you want phones to register with this and all that, so just bridge it straight into the network. Uh, and then you're good to go. So that's, I mean, that's the hardware requirements. You hit finish and then power this guy on and you'll see it start uh, start going. So it's going to load up and bring us up to the setup window. I'm going to click and pause my way through this installation because there really is a lot of just sitting and staring. First question asked, do you want to perform a media check? I trust my ISO. No, I do not. Uh, so it's going to go through and run a hardware detection at this point where it's going to recognize I'm running VMware. Notice right there it says VMware passed detection validation because Cisco has allowed us to install in a virtualized environment. It then asks what operating system we want to install. Now you got no mouse, you got to use your tab and, and arrow keys to move around. I'm going to say I want Cisco Unified Communication Manager. I can see below, based on the hardware, it's not going to let me install Unity Connection or the Business Edition 5000 server. That's fine, I just want CUCM. Uh, so now it's saying, hey, there's no version that I see on there. Do you want to proceed? Yes. The wizard will set up the initial config. That's fine. I'll hit proceed. Uh, do I want an upgrade patch? No, I do not. Basic installation. What's my time zone? So I'm going to say I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. 
Okay. No, I do not want to change. You see what I mean? Grab your cup of coffee, buddy, because this is what we've got. So, host name, I'm going to say CUCM8, uh, IP address 172.30.100. Let's make this guy 77. 255.255.255.0. Gate, default gateway is going to be 172.30.100.1 and cycle back around for my zero there. Okay. Do I want DNS on this machine? Yes, I do. Primary server. 8.8.8.8, good old Google, 4.2.2.2, and domain, it makes you put one in there, so I'm just going to put home.local, click OK. Administrator ID, administrator, you need to have a non-dictionary-based password, so I'll type that in. And you can make these whatever you want. This is this is generating a security certificate, it's going to self-generate one. I'll put Phoenix, Arizona, United States, OK. Uh, is this the first node? That tells it it's going to be a publisher server. Yes, it is. What is the NTP server? I'm going to use pool.ntp.org, and that's why I need DNS is to resolve that. Don't need any more. This, this will automatically set the time for my server. Uh, security password, KQ... You, I'm not going to tell you what this password is. <laughs> Type in my, my uh, database password. Uh, then I'm going to do, uh, so do I want SMTP so it can send emails? No, I don't. Not for my lab environment. Uh, application username. This is going to be for a different section of the call manager administration. And that's it. Platform configuration is complete. Are you sure? I'll click OK. And it's going to now run through the installation. The rest of the installation is literally just watching this kind of jazz go on, where it's just copying files, doing things, it'll reboot a couple times, and you're there. Now, I will warn you, one of the things that will come up, it will eventually come up with a DNS error if you don't have your own DNS server, because it tries to do what's called a reverse DNS lookup on the IP address to find out, does it match the call manager's name? Uh, and it's going to say, whoa, it does. I can't find this call manager in the DNS server. And it says, this could cause problems, all that kind of stuff. You just say, ignore, because really, it, you know, this is a lab environment. We don't need to have DNS uh, configured completely for this call manager. But uh, by the time it's done, I, I'll, I'll just show you, I don't need a third call manager, so I'm going to bail on that install. But by the time it's done, you'll know it's done because you'll come to a screen that looks like this. And this is where you can log in with that pre-configured uh, username and password that you set up. I should, it's the one that you set up during the installation, and that will get you to the command line interface. Uh, but the main place that you're going to go once Call Manager is installed is through the web GUI. You're going to pull up at the, the web GUI and say, I want to go to uh, the IP address of my Call Manager. It will come up and say, hey, I've you know, installed the application. I see this, and it'll flip you over. Now it's going to turn on HTTPS. You can see up there uh, we're in a secure site. Now you can actually log in to the Call Manager administration uh, from this page. And now you can access all the menus and do everything. We'll talk more about this a little bit later. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.